Hey, my name is David Buck, and right now we're going to learn what adjustments to make to a portrait in Lightroom to enhance its look. What to sharpen, what to darken, what to lighten, what to soften. Basically, this is going to be a crash course on everything that you want to do to a portrait to give it a professional level edit. In the last video, we learned how to make these selections using this hidden feature of people detection in Lightroom. Now we're going to cover each of the options step by step and learn what to do to the face skin, the eyes, the lips, the teeth, the hair in order to edit a beautiful portrait. And to keep it looking natural. Now, all of these things can be done in Lightroom, in Photoshop, or about a hundred different other programs. The reason I do as much as I can in Lightroom is because I'm used to editing hundreds of photos for family shoots, for weddings, uh, portrait sessions, and I want the ability to be able to synchronize and copy any adjustment that I make to 10 or 20 or a hundred other photos. Because it's not just about what you're doing, it's about the efficiency of getting it all done in a reasonable amount of time. So when you're done this video, you'll be able to have built your own preset for a one-click solution for your in Lightroom portrait editing. When editing faces, it's really important to keep a natural look. We all know what faces look like, so our BS detection filter on editing people is very high. Also, if someone else pays you to take a picture of them, uh, they should look like themselves when you deliver the photos. So when you look at the face, it's helpful to look at it in parts. The skin should appear soft and without blemishes. The eyebrows should be darker and sharper. The eye sclera or the white parts of the eye should be brighter and desaturated. The iris and pupil should be brighter, more vibrant, more textured. The lips should be a richer color of the chosen lip cut lipstick color. The teeth should be desaturated or de-yellowed a bit. The hair should be richer in the dark tones and have its highlights brightened and textured. Now, that's a lot of adjustments and that's a lot of different adjustments, which is why, why this facial detection feature system and the masks that go along with it is such a time saver because it allows you to make all those different adjustments to the different parts of the face and to make it look wonderful. So let's go over each one of those adjustments one by one. So I've selected the person and I've selected all of the checkbox options and I've asked it here to create eight separate masks for this photo. So here under the masks, if I hover over, you'll see the different parts that need adjusting. We're going to start with skin. Now, keeping in mind that when you're editing skin, you want it to look soft, but it also has to match, the in this case, what Lightroom calls the body skin. So face, you can't just do face skin. You have to do face skin and body skin because otherwise they look too dissimilar and then it looks unusual. So I'm going to make the adjustments to the face and then I'm also going to make the same adjustments to the body skin. In order to get softer skin, you want to come down here first to what Lightroom calls the presence, the so texture, clarity, and dehaze and you want to do the opposite of what you do to make an image sharper. So if texture is going to enhance all the details of the face, well, I want to take that down. Now, I can take it down quite a ways and still have it look natural because the mask is very good and it's just on the skin. I could be happy right there with just a whole lot less texture. I like to use texture and you see how clarity it, it, it works on the bigger features. So that shading in the face, it gives a softer blend to the face. So I'm going to drop that down a little bit. Not too far because then it just looks like a flat face. We still want some three-dimensionality to the face. I'm going to go down here to sharpness and take a look and see what that does. We're going to drop sharpness down just a little bit. And if we zoom in here to 100%, it's looking pretty good already, just in the difference right there. So I'm happy with that. So to do the same thing to the body skin, we're just going to drop that down. We already know what we were doing. Drop our sharpness down. Good, let's move on. Okay, eyebrows. You want to be able to see the eyebrows. I want to make them a little bit more contrasted. And I'm going to darken them down just a little bit. Oh, that's way too far. That looks just silly. Okay, so we can darken them down just a little bit. And I'm going to bring up the texture in the eyebrows just to give them a nice sharp look. We're going to go up here to the eye sclera. Now, this really is only needed when there's a cast when there's a color cast in the lighting that's giving the white parts of the eyes less white. So I'm just going to drop down the saturation a little bit. So I'm going to drop it down to, let's say, minus 20 thereabouts. And I'm going to brighten them up just a little bit with the whites. Okay. Now let's move on to the iris and pupil. If she had colored eyes, you'd want them to be brighter and more saturated. So we're going to bring the exposure up just a little bit. We're going to bring the highlights up a bit. And we're going to bring the saturation up. That's not going to affect her brown eyes all that much, but in some of your other portraits, it is going to make a difference. Lips, you want them to be more saturated. So I'm going to bring those up a little bit. 
and I like to give them just a little bit of contrast. Like that teeth, you got to be careful with teeth in order to not make them look just stark white because then it's not going to look right. So just take a little bit of the yellow out. The other option here would be to do a bit, add a bit of blue in there with your white balance. It's going to counter the yellow that you see. So we're going to do a little bit of both. We'll do minus 10 on the saturation and we'll do minus five on the temperature of the white balance. I'll add a bit of clarity there just to sharpen those up. And then hair. So I'm going to bring up the shadows a little bit to make sure the dark parts of the hair are are visible or there's detail there. And I want to bring up the highlights and the whites. And then I'm going to dial up contrast just a little bit along with my shadows to make sure I'm keeping that detail. So with those adjustments of skin, eyes, eyebrows, lips, teeth, hair, here's what we get as our before and after. Now when you have your portrait just the way that you want it, click this button over here in the presets to make a new preset. Choose the masks that you've created on the right and make sure that they're all selected. Then save the preset as portrait retouch or something like that. Make it under a masking parent menu so you know that it's a preset that requires Lightroom to do some thinking when you use it. Now when you come across another portrait, you can one click that portrait retouch preset and if you really want to level up, go through your shoot and label all of the photos that you want to apply this to. Go to the library module, select all, and from this drop down menu, apply the portrait retouch to all of them in bulk. Walk away, go play golf, and let Lightroom do the work for you. If you want to learn how to let Lightroom do all this for you for your entire shoot, go to the link in the comments for a free 15 minute training on how to get your edits to 100% but faster.